So if we go back to the first case, you remember it was a case with a patient with a massive portal invasion with, uh, with uh, no, okay, so it, it is working. I put again the case, uh, no portal invasion. Just I go back. Uh, portal invasion, large HEC, normal liver function, nor quite normal liver, no, no pastory of cirrhosis. <coughs> Uh, so this is uh, a case, I would say that when there is normal liver, I am a little bit more aggressive, but if we look on the BCLC staging, and we are here in Barcelona, so it's impossible not to put this slide in my talk, and in fact I use uh, this, uh, this is a very well done work and it has been updated. Uh, clearly this patient has a contraindication to a local treatment. But so it's, it's more a patient for sorafenib than a patient for, for local regional treatment. But the fact is that at this time, we have this radioembolization that is coming. Even if we have seen in my previous talk, I was discussing the results of the SRAR trial, that the, 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 the trial was not positive. Radioembolization could be used in this patient. Tests cannot be used in, when there is a portal vein invasion, but radioembolization can be used even in these patients. And again, this is the, the trial. I do not want to go uh, again into the details of that. But maybe in a patient like that with a good, very good performance status, no uh, liver in cirrhosis, I, I would test uh, this, this kind of treatment if I have no problem of money in my hospital, I would consider the, the, this treatment. Do you want me to go uh, up to the, or we discuss each case by each case, or I, I, I say, okay, okay, okay. Okay, for the second case, uh, this is a multifocal HEC with only a segmental portal invasion, normal liver function again, but there is cirrhosis, but without uh, any uh, esophageal viruses and normal platelets. To my opinion, this is exactly the patients that were entered in the two main trials showing that uh, TES was, was active, uh, and especially the, the last one the, published in the New England Journal of Medicine by uh, Joseph Lovett in 2002. So I will have no concern about the fact that these kind of patients have to be treated with uh, local regional treatment and especially a TES. This is, as again, I put that on, my, uh, on, on the slide on the BCLC uh, staging and treatment guide. Uh, Guidelines. And in fact, when you look on the cohorts that has been done with rafinib in the past, you can see that a lot of patients that have been treated in this Gideon uh, observational study in HEC, more than 3,000 patients, a lot of these patients have received previously tests. So it means that the order of the treatment is more tests followed by sorafenib when there is a failure of taste, than to put uh, sorafenib first. So again, this is an indirect, but this is an argument to use uh, test in, in this patient. And when we look on other guidelines and we were in the world, you can see uh, in Asian Pacific uh, uh, recommendation, exactly the same pattern. Uh, this is a good uh, candidate for, for taste. Uh, and the same for the Hong Kong liver cancer uh, staging system. So I think that there is not too much, I would say, debate about that. Maybe there are a little bit too many uh, lesions into the liver, but I think this is a good candidate for a local regional treatment. And now we are doing tests better, I would say, with super selective uh, tests that is able to improve the results and to decrease the toxicity, the toxicity uh, of tests. Something that is very important is that when we speak about sorafenib use, it's easy because sorafenib is an oral drug, so we just have to take tablets and we have to follow the treatment and to decrease the dose if there is some kind of toxicity. Uh, TES remains something that is done by interventional radiologists with some differences in the use and some uh, in from one hospital to another hospital. Even in the same team, sometimes there are differences. So the interventional radiologists uh, tried very recently to make 
technical recommendation for, for the use of tests, and you, you can see uh, how it has to, to be done with this film. I never put a film in my slides, but this slide has been given to me by Professor Thierry Debert, who is interventional. You can see this masturbation effect is very good for the, for the, 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 the drug itself and the, what, what is injected to, 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 to the patient. And this is this kind of, uh, of practice that is, that is good for uh, uh, to obtain this kind of emulsion that is after that given to the patient with the, the good relation between uh, um, the active drug that is adriamycin and the lipiodol that is uh, oil. So you, you put water in oil and not oil in water. This is something that has been demonstrated to be uh, very, very important. And it has to be prepared just during uh, the, the treatment by itself. And it has to be followed. And we have now new tools with uh, uh, three-dimensional uh, radiology to follow the effect of the treatment of a selected treatment on the tumor. And it has changed uh, rapidly. And, and probably the way we are treating patients now, in not we, interventional radiologists are treating patients now is more secure due to all of these uh, new uh, tools and the definition of clear international standard in, in the treatment of the patients with uh, the fact that at the end this emission has to uh, do a good stasis in tumor feeding arteries with appearance of lipiodol in portal valve branches. This is something that is important. And after that, you perform the gel form embolization that should induce a complete stasis up to the catheter tip when placed super selectively. <coughs> so you can see that there are very, very clear uh, guidelines now to, to perform this kind, uh, this kind of, uh, of treatment. After that, what is important too is that we have not to choose for taste and continue taste without any rediscussion of the strategy of the treatment. And this is something that is very important because the choice is not to do taste for one year versus sorafenib for one year in this kind of patients. Clearly, you have to, to, to propose, if you choose to propose a local regional treatment, you have to propose to perform taste first. For instance, it is my choice for these patients. Uh, if there is no problem, it's very important to do at least two uh, taste uh, treatments before to evaluate the efficacy of taste because we know that at the beginning, after only one uh, cycle of treatment, uh, there are a lot of non-responders <coughs> that could be a responder after the second one. But after two uh, episodes of taste, it is clearly a major problem to discuss if we have to continue with the same treatment uh, in terms of a, the evaluation as to take into consideration the efficacy that has been obtained and the tolerance and the liver function that is always very important and especially in these uh, uh, cirrhotic, cirrhotic patients. So, uh, and after that, uh, after a long period of time, if you want to resume taste, uh, this is for very specific cases, a new progression, but a long period after in a treated location that previously responded. If you wait for a long time and there is a new uh, progression, you can resume taste for this kind of patient. And, and eventually, if there are new uh, tumors uh, in, in the region that have been not previously invaded and treated, this is a possibility uh, to, to do again taste. So as a summary, I would say that there is no test indication in large tumor or per the portal vein thrombosis uh, of the trunk. Uh, there, there are indications for test repetitions that must be clinically balanced when retreatment is unsafe because of deterioration of liver function, when poor tolerance to taste based on clinical or biochemical findings or scoring, or scoring is observed. A uh, test should not be repeated without response after two rounds of taste. If there is no response after two rounds, there will be no response at all, and it is dangerous. A uh, test has not to be repeated when major progression occurs after an initial response, because probably this is a patient that is becoming completely resistant to local regional uh, treatment. And we see also treatment stage migration, and in that case, this is no more a candidate uh, for taste because there is new metastasis outside of the liver of a lymph node in the, in the, in the pedicle or something like that. Uh, 
And at this time, we can say that the level of evidence of taste is better than the level of evidence of, of radioembolization. Uh, the problem to me is clearly also the sequencing, and I already discussed a little bit this point uh, uh, during my, my, my precedent uh, uh, presentation uh, wh when I discussed the, the SAR results. Is it possible to sequence? Is it possible to, to do tests and then after that to, to do sorafenib? We know that combination of tests plus sorafenib is not better than tests. It has been very recently published in Lancet Oncology, so this is not to be done. But is it possible to do tests and after that sorafenib? In this way, it is, it is possible. And what is important is the fact that if we select, I don't want to go into the details of this score, but there, there is a score that has been uh, proposed uh, <coughs> to evaluate uh, the, the, the chemoembolization. And with this score, we are able to define the patients that should not continue with tests and that should move very rapidly to sorafenib because they are uh, potentially uh, bad responders uh, to, uh, to, to tests. And you can see that it is working when you, you, you select the, the patient with this kind. And the Japanese uh, colleagues uh, have done exactly uh, the, same, uh, the, same, uh, the same experience with, uh, with the score. And, and you can see in this trial, very interesting trial, they compare the effectiveness of sorafenib in patients with, uh, with, uh, with test refractory, in test refractory patients, and they continue to do tests in patients, and they do sorafenib, and you can see that sorafenib was clearly better because patients were becoming refractory to tests and it was not the, 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 the right treatment. So clearly, I think that there is a, there is a place and this is the algorithm that you can use uh, for, for, for these patients. It's clearly for me, there, there is a place at the beginning of this local disease, but not curable disease. There is a place for local regional treatment. TES remains the standard of care for that. We are waiting for a clear comparison between tests and, and radioembolization. But you have to follow patients because you have to define the best, the right moment to move from tests, because we know that it will happen to move from <coughs> tests to sorafenib. Thank you very much.